When you're undergoing electrolysis, what you're doing is you're adding electricity to make a non-spontaneous chemical reaction take place. So remember, voltaic or galvanic cells will take chemical energy and turn it into electrical energy. But now an electrolytic cell is going to take electrical potential energy and turn it into chemical potential energy. Okay, so um, what you, and, and by the way, that means then that the reaction is non spontaneous. So it would have a negative voltage when you do the calculation. What you're doing is you're zapping a solution with a power supply and you're getting chemicals out of it. So here's an example of, well, here, a solution of nickel 2 chloride is electrolyzed. So now, what are you going to get? What's the net reaction going to be? What's going to happen here? Well, where, with the voltaic cell, we actually had two half cells that were added together with a bridge. And by the way, you don't really need to make a voltaic cell diagram with um, uh, two separate se cells that are separated from each other and have a bridge. You can actually take one of those cells, that half cell, uh, and put it into a cup that is porous where ions can pass through it. That's called a porous cup. And then you could take that one and put it into the other one and ion exchange will occur through the cup um, where cations migrate to the cathode and anions migrate to the anode. And then you can have it all condensed into one little package sort of thing, but you still have two half cells that are involved in the reaction. Uh, so you can do porous cup diagrams as well, and maybe your teacher or professor is going to want you to do that too. But now in this case, in electrolysis, you don't need two cells. You just need one. What you need is a solution that you're going to zap with electricity. And you're going to use inert electrodes. So here's the solution of the nickel-2 chloride. We're going to zap it with a power supply. And, um, well, you know, we're going to have maybe uh, sticks of carbon here. Or maybe they could be platinum, PT, as well. So, okay, well, I'll just make one of them platinum, PT, and one of them carbon. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> now, when you zap it with electricity, you're still going to have a, a circuit that the electrons have to move in. And ion migration is going to occur inside the beaker as well. So what you're always going to be able to do is to say, and you know what, I always just go to the left side and I go, that's my anode and that's my cathode. And if that's the case, electrons always travel from the anode to the cathode. And you're going to say, well, you know, Ken Guy, everything sounds backwards from electrolytic to voltaic. You know, the, 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 the potential energy, uh, chemical versus electrical, uh, and, and then you're, you're saying that one is positive, uh, you know, and one is negative. It sounds like everything's opposite. Yeah, everything pretty much is opposite, except for one thing. That electrons will still always move, no matter what type of cell you have, from the anode to the cathode, and cations always migrate to the uh, cathode, and anions always migrate to the anode. So the little song never changed, okay? Cations migrate to the cathode, dot, dot, dot. So, now, we're going to zap the solution of nickel-2 chloride. What's going to happen? Well, you still need to use your chart to be able to find the highest chemical on the left and the lowest on the right. That's the, high, the strongest oxidizing agent reacting with the strongest reducing agent. And when you do that with this list of chemicals here, what's this chemical, what we got here? Nickel-2 ions, chloride ions, and water. That's what's in here getting zapped. Now, if you look diligently, carefully, and properly in your data booklet, or your new chart here, what you're going to see is that the nickel ion is the highest on the left, and that's your SOA. And so you write that reaction out, because that's the SOA, you write that reaction out from left to right exactly the way it is in the booklet. But when you come to the chloride ion, you'll find it on the chart, but water is actually going to be lower. And so that means that water should be the SRA. And you should write down the half reaction for water here. But, Kevin Guy, you wrote down the chloride reaction. Yeah, I did, because that's the one that actually takes place. Look, here's the thing. There's an exception on the chart here, an anomaly, if you will. And that is going to be this, that when you find the water and when you find chloride ion, and you say, and you say, because there's the chloride ion, there's the water there, and there's the chloride ion up there, sorry. <laughs> and you look at that and you say, well, water is actually going to be stronger. The principle of overcharging, which is something we won't really get into, actually comes into play here. And what happens is, even though water is the stronger oxidizing agent, 
kinetically, the chloride ion reacts very quickly and f almost first. So here's what happens. You might think you're zapping the solution and you're totally safe. And you're just going to have water being the SRA. But chloride ion is going to actually turn into chlorine gas. And if you inhale enough of that, it'll kill you. Okay, And I actually made that once by accident in my class too because I wasn't necessarily aware of this anomaly. So here's the thing. And it's the only time that you're ever going to have an exception. So just remember that when chloride iron and water are battling for the SRA, just those two at only this one time, the only exception you have to worry about, chloride wins even though water should. Got it? Remember it. It's important. And so that's the SRA. And now, when you add those two reactions together, you're going to get nickel ions plus two, chlor two chloride ions, and that's going to make Cl2 gas, <coughs> greenish yellow poison, and nickel. But what's the E naught when you add those together? Well, you reverse this one because it's the SRA and add it to this one, and you're going to get negative 1.62 volts. And listen, that means it's non-spontaneous. If you take nickel 2 chloride and just put it in solution, nothing happens. Well, no kidding. It just dissolves and it just kind of dissociates. It just kind of sits there. But you zap it. And what's going to happen is you are going to get reduction and oxidation. Reduction of nickel ions into nickel. Reduction occurs at the cathode, R and C. The two consonants go together. So. That means that right here at this cathode, this is where the nickel goes up and it's going to form nickel solid. And what's going to happen? The chloride ion is going to migrate over here because it's reacting at the anode because that's oxidation. And the chloride ion is going to turn to chlorine gas here and you're going to get bubbles come off of here of chlorine gas at the anode and you're going to get nickel plating occur at this electrode. Now, I don't know why you would want to plate platinum with nickel. That sounds like the uh, kind of a silly thing to do because platinum is a lot more valuable. But you know, if this was a junky piece of metal here and you were plating like copper onto it or gold or silver, now you could improve that quality, the look of that metal by electroplating, which is what this principle is. Okay, now, I want to cover with this kind of diagram here a couple of other things uh, in terms of electrolysis that, uh, that you might be able to uh, encounter.